thank you for coming. I'm Mrs. Fahey. And I'm Mrs. Lyons. So I have your students at the beginning of the alphabet, A through K. And I have L through Z. So tonight, we want to welcome you to our senior parent night. And the purpose tonight is really for you and your student to get some more information about the process for senior year. I heard someone when they came in said that they were really stressed out. I can tell you right now, I have a freshman in college who I went through this last year, and I have a senior right now, and I'm a guidance counselor and I'm helping kids, and when I try to talk to him about college, he's like, Mom, you're stressing me out. Let's not talk about it. So I feel your pain. So tonight we're hoping we've met with all your students um, and started to talk about the process. We've done some activities in previous years, and we're hoping to kind of link everything together for you. And again, we're hoping to help you manage this stressful year, because it is. You made it here, right? Parents, you made it. So it's senior year. Um, we've done a lot. So Mrs. Lyons and I have been meeting with your students starting in 10th grade. And in 10th grade is really about college, I mean career planning. And then junior year, we had our junior night last year, our college planning night, where we started to introduce some of this stuff to the parents. We've been reinforcing things with the students every year. Every year we go over their transcripts and we start to talk about post-secondary planning, whether it's college, whether it's the military, whether it's a technical school. So we've done a lot. You know, your students may have done their testing, whether it's ACT or SAT. Junior year, we brought the whole junior class on some college tours so they could get a sense of fit. You know, not so much are they going to that college, but what does an open campus look like? What does a closed campus look like? Could I see myself in this type of campus? So that really was the purpose of our college tours. And then we've had college and career panels where we've looked at different industries, maybe the healthcare industry. Last year it was the service industry. Understanding, you know, five or six different people in that industry and how their career paths have evolved because everyone takes a different path. Um, and we've done college searches with your students. Last year we do a lot of that junior year. We continue to do it beginning of senior year because everyone's on a different path and everyone's going to get there. So everyone's process is a little bit different, so not to worry. So last spring we had a college planning night, which we listened to some of the feedback from parents, and instead of just having all PowerPoint slides and talking, we made it very interactive and we showed parents and students how to do a college search. So we wanted to keep your feedback in mind and make these sessions as useful to you as possible. So that was our college planning night, and we've done, as I've said, Ms. Lyons and I have done individual meetings with students. We've done some small group. This year we have the Viking block with our new schedule. It's great. So we're able to go in and communicate to students in small groups, as well as individual meetings in classroom meetings. That's kind of what we've done and what your students have been exposed to until this point. So this year, senior year, it's all about finalizing the plan and applying to colleges. So that's what the focus of tonight is. You know, your students hopefully have taken or in the process of taking their ACTs or SATs, finalizing the college essay. So we did some college essay sessions during junior year. Some of the teachers may be doing some exercises on college essays in senior year. And hopefully you and your students are narrowing your list of colleges, gone on some college visits. So we always tell the students you want to make sure you have some, a reach school, some safety schools, and some match schools. And so now we've talked to the students about understanding the application process for each of the colleges they're interested in. So we want to kind of go through the Common App with you tonight. And a lot of people have talked about FAFSA, the financial aid process. So we're going to share some information with you about some workshops. Um, one in particular that's done very well is at Stonehill College on October 1st. So we get a lot of questions about sending your scores. So one thing that we just wanted to share, and this is in your handout, is how to do this. 
and if students have questions, they can come down and we can walk through this with them. If you have questions, you can give us a call. So anyone that's taken the SATs or the PSATs already has a College Board account. So when you're getting ready to send your scores to college, you go right on that College Board account. You go into um, the SAT tab. Up at the top, you can see that's underlined. And you click on Send Score Reports to Colleges. That brings you to a second menu. And it's going to say um, underneath there, you can still register for the SAT or send your scores. When you send your scores, you get a little pop-up message. And this is where I think some people get confused. In the next screenshot, you can actually search for your college from a list of colleges, or you can type in the name, and it'll give you a list of colleges. And you highlight, in that example, American International College is clicked. Once you've highlighted the college, you just click Add, and it'll show on your selected recipients. So you can add you know, a number of colleges there. And then you're going to hit Continue. Um, so in this case, I searched for Bridgewater State College. I added it. And then I'm going to continue. And then it's going to ask me what scores I want to send. So you can send all your scores. You can pick, if you say some scores, it'll say you know, the November 1st test, the October test. You select it. And then you're going to go on the next screen, and that's going to where you put your credit card information. So we've just had a lot of questions in the past about how to do that. So we wanted to include that in your handout. The next thing we're going to go over, so I think most of you got this. We, we handed one out to the students when we went through and did their classroom meetings. We call it the yellow sheet. It's a transcript release form. And your student is going to fill out one of these forms for every school they apply to. So we, we have them fill it out, and it serves a couple of purposes. One, it's they sign it, and it's a release so that we can send their transcript and information to colleges. Number two, it's a great tracking device for us, because what we will do, and I'll go through it in a minute, if you have it there in front of you. Let me pull it up. I don't have a copy with me. but So on the top, it'll ask for your student's name. And we will actually put the date that it's received in guidance. We will ask them to circle their counselor, whether it's myself or Mrs. Lyons. Then they're going to go in and select whether they're applying early action, early decision, or regular decision, because that's information that's helpful for us to know. And we ask that your students give us two weeks before their deadline. So we'll ask for their deadline. So for early, early decision, I exp we explain to the students, that's the binding agreement. That's, you know, you've always dreamed of going to BU. That's your top school. If you get in, you are absolutely going to go. So we just explain to students that if you select early decision, that is binding. So I think there might be a loophole, a financial loophole, but I'm not, you know, 100% sure. That's very, depends on the school, but that's binding. So we always say to the students, if you do that and you get in, that's a legal agreement that you're bound to go to that school. Early action, that is what you know, I recommend a lot of students do if you know where you want to go and you have all your stuff together. So early action is usually November 1st or November 15th. If you are in a applying to a nursing program, it's usually earlier in October. The benefit of early action is that you, in most cases, know before the Christmas break if you got in. So I always say to students, if you can do that, that's great. You get through the application process. You can breathe a little easier. But also, if you don't get in to the school that you wanted to, you can still apply regular decision. So it's a great opportunity. Regular decision is from January onward through March. So that's why we tell the students, make sure you look at the individual um, websites for your colleges and understand their application process. On the back of the yellow sheet, um, there's some responsibilities of who's responsible for what, whether it be the counselor. So we, 
will submit all of their transcripts, their academic information. We do a letter of recommendation. If they're asking a teacher to do a letter of recommendation, we encourage them last year, if you have an idea of who your teachers are, give them a heads up because they get bombarded. And again, you want to give them time to write a thorough letter of recommendation. and then what the students are responsible for. So the yellow sheet is really an opportunity um, for the students to, to give us information, and also if there's, we leave a space at the bottom if there's any special requests. A lot of times people in sports need their transcripts sent to college, to the, the coach, so they can put that in there. And again, it's also a tracking device for us. So on there it'll ask like a checklist, did you submit your scores? Have, we have students do a student information sheet so that we can get some information from them so we can just really develop a thorough letter of recommendation. So that's kind of the yellow sheet. Are there any questions about that? And again, if anyone doesn't have one, we will make sure we get them for you. So we went over this with the students and it's really important um, for them to have, again, one sheet for each college they're applying to they need to let us know whether it's a common app school or if they're going to apply through the website because we might have to send some things directly to the school. So it's a tracking device for us. So for instance, if a student comes down and says, Mrs. Fahey, Bridgewater State didn't get my information, I can pull out my packet with the yellow sheets and say, well, I submitted that on this date. So it helps us in terms of tracking. All right, in a few minutes, um, Mrs. Lyons is going to talk a little bit about the Common App. So, the Common, there's a couple different ways that your students are going to apply to college. And I'm sorry that I'm going to talk from behind you, but I'm going to talk from behind you because I'm going to go to the Common App website and I'm going to walk you through how to apply to college. So, excuse me that I'll be back there, but your students are either going to apply to your colleges through the Common App or they're going to apply directly through the college's website. Some colleges say you can apply one way or the other. So a school like Worcester State does not use the Common App. Salem State does not use the Common App. So if you're applying to those two schools, they will apply directly through those colleges. Which is, on, I, sometimes the Common App simplifies things um, because I'll show you, students will be able to see when teachers have sent their letters of recommendation, when guidance has sent their transcripts. So it'll be a nice way for your students and you to see who sent what and when. Um, so the Common App is a lot of work. It just takes, it takes a good few hours to sit down and fill out. It's not an overwhelming amount of work, but if you have one Common App school and one non-Common App school, it can feel a little tedious. <laughs> so, but we're gonna walk through to minimize some of the stress. I know there's a lot of students that haven't started yet. So now is the time we've encouraged, just make some time just chip away at it, mm -hmm. little by little. Because you can so, save it. You can start it and save it and then go back to it. So it says on here there's 900 universities that use it. So there's a good chunk of the schools that our students apply to that will use it. So we're going to go directly to the site. Can you hear me? Can you guys hear okay. Ms. Lyons? Yeah. All right. So it's commonapp.org. So your students should all have this site. We have it in the packet. Uh, we've provided it on our college checklist that we gave out last year. They've changed it every year that I've been working in East Bridgewater, they've changed the layout of it. So if your child has applied to college previously, it's going to look different than it does now. I wanted to show you when you click on apply and you go down, it says for first time students view the guide. This guide is brand new to Common App and it's incredible. What we're gonna do in a few minutes, I'm gonna walk you through the Common App, but we're gonna watch one of the videos on a specific area so you can see how helpful it is. And any questions that you have will be answered by one of these videos. And if it isn't, then you will please make sure you call Ms. Fahey, mm -hmm. myself, email us, and we will answer any questions that you have. So I've created a student account um, for myself so that I can walk you guys through this. So when your students create an account, it'll take you to this page. 
there's five different tabs, a dashboard, my colleges, Common App, college search, and financial aid resources. The financial aid resources, they add to it every year, but what's nice about it is it's gonna link you directly to the FAFSA. It's gonna talk to you about how to fill it out, it's gonna tell you that you can apply as early as October 1st. You cannot apply before October 1st. So it, there's a lot of tools that you can use to get all of your paperwork and information in, together in preparation for that October 1st begin date, but they will roll it out beginning then. So, and it, there's a link directly taking you to the FAFSA, which is here. It's my understanding there was another site that p parents and students thought was the FAFSA and they charged you. So that is not the FAFSA that the government uses. This site is a free site that you will start here and you will create that. And that will be created under the student's name. They will add the parent information, but it will be under the student's name. So, where your student is gonna start is we go to a college search. They list all of the colleges, 872 colleges that use the Common App, if you can see this right here. Let's say I want to apply to Boston College. When I do Boston, it's gonna come up with all of the Boston schools. So you can either search by city or you can search by college name. I'm gonna add it by checking, checking this plus box. And I'm all, while I'm here, I'm just gonna also add another school too so I can show you what multiple schools look like. Actually, I'll add three. So easy enough. So I've now added it to my list of colleges that I'd like to apply to. When I click here, those colleges are gonna show up. Okay, they're gonna show up as like subheadings. So Boston College, when I click on it, it's gonna tell me where it's located, it's gonna give me its contact information, it's gonna give me the deadlines, and it's gonna give me a lot of other information, even financial aid information regarding scholarships based on when I apply. Every college is going to have specific questions that they want you to fill out relative to that school. So when I click on questions, it's going to say preferred start time. So your students, if they start in the fall, will be September. If they start the following spring, January. They're all drop-down boxes. So it's, it's very easy to fill out. Um, are you a US resident? Yes. You'll just go through. It's just a lot of yes, no, yes, no, um, drop down kind of things. Felonies, all that fun stuff. Okay. Every school is going to have a different set of questions which are just pertinent to that school. So Emerson is going to have a different set of questions. It will ask me again, when do I want to start? It even gives me the summer option. Do I intend to pursue need-based financial aid? Everybody in this room should say yes when they're asked that question. Everybody is looking for financial aid in some form or other, scholarships, grants, um, loans, or not. But that's, that's where the old is at. Everything that you fill out here is only going to Emerson. Everything I fill out under Boston College is only going to Boston College. Emerson is not receiving my information about Boston College, and they do, they, Emerson will not be aware that I am also applying to Boston College. So there's another tab here, and I'm going to come back to the My Colleges. This is called the Common App tab, and this is where they're going to ask you for a host of information. They want your information. They want to know if I've used other names. They want to know a lot of contact information citizenship information. If there's a student or a family that is eligible for free and reduced lunch and use an SAT waiver, this Common App fee waiver, this is the spot that you're going to be able to say, yes, I am eligible or yes, I have used that. And it's going to ask you what makes you eligible to receive that fee waiver. You're going to, once you hit submit, you're going to sign it and then you're going to submit it. That's going to flag Ms. Fahey and I we're gonna to have to go through and confirm that you guys ha do receive free and reduced lunch, but that will waive your application fees, which is wonderful because they add up.
So you can see under this Common App tab, there's all of these sub-tabs, right? All of these need to be filled out thoroughly. And some of them are very easy to get through. Um, and some of them are a little bit longer. Under this Education tab, it's going to ask you for our school information. Your students, when Ms. Fahey and I went to their classrooms, we gave all the students this code, which they're going to need to plug in when they're applying. Your students began East Bridgewater High School in September 2016, and it's just going to ask you specific questions relevant to our school. Graduation date is going to be June 07, 2020. And again, it's going to go on. It's going to ask you a lot of questions. It's going to ask you my contact information, and it will ask you Ms. Fahey's contact information. We've given that information to your students because a lot of them don't know our phone numbers, and if colleges need to reach us specifically and directly, we want that to be um, available. So your students should know what to fill out there. When we met with them in their classes, we gave them this specific information. This is information that your students wouldn't have otherwise. The graduating class size, how we report their decile. What a decile is, is there's 169 students in the senior graduating class. We don't rank kids one through 169. So your student, if they're number three in the class, they don't know that. What they do know is that they're in the top 10%. The way that they know that they're in the top 10% is on the transcript that we gave to them, it says decile, and there's a number that corresponds next to decile. If it's a one, that means they're in the top 10%. If it's a two, it's, they're in the top 20%, a three, 30, and so on. So if my student has a five next to their decile, I'll select top 50%. We let them know it's a weighted rank, and this is a little bit confusing on the GPA scale reporting. So it's actually on a 4.0 scale, which is quite confusing because our AP classes and our honors classes are ranked a little bit higher. So we let the students know that it was, it was on a 5.0 scale, but it's actually on a 4, and we will recommunicate that when we see them tomorrow. And we'll, we'll let them know that it's on a 4.0 scale. They're going to enter their cumulative GPA, and it's a weighted GPA. We let your students know that there's no guessing allowed on the Common App. If they don't know the answers to any of these questions, they can't guess. They have to ask us. And the reason why we don't want them to guess is Ms. Fahey and I have to, we're going to be communicating a lot of this information, and we want it to match up. So if there's any discrepancies on the information your student is reporting, versus what we're reporting, they're going to call us and question it, and it's a lot easier if we're in alignment with um, what needs to go where. Any questions on this right here? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. They can email us. They can walk into guidance. We will give them the information. Uh, Ms. Fahey met with her students separately than I met with my students, and I commuted to please take a picture of their transcript and take a picture because it's, they lose it. We misplace things. So um, we just want it readily available, but we understand that they file things away places and then they can't be found again. <laughs> so anything that they need, anything you guys need, please do not hesitate to reach out to us, okay? So that's a great question. So yep. the GPA that they're going to be applying to college with is the GPA that they finished their junior year with. So every student was given their current most up-to-date GPA. Next semester when they get through their elective classes, that might be a semester-long elective, and they receive a final grade in that elective, it will not be recalculated. So the GPA that they're applying with is going to be what it is straight through. 
but the, we are responsible for uploading their semester grades. So we do a mid-year report, and then we do a final report. So we actually also do a submission to the Common App, and that's where we do that. But the colleges and the GPA they submit is their junior year. So once they submit this application, there's no unsubmitting it. So I think that was part of your question too. So, but the information that's on here shouldn't change. Everything should be accurate. And it's gonna ask them down here to please report what their current or most recent year courses are. So they're gonna write down, so I said how many courses would I like to s report is seven, and you can do as many as you want. So. Um, well, there's a question in the Common App that asks if you are attending any other schools or any other colleges. So that information can be added on there as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Question. Yes. Um, I'm confused about the weighted GPA. So how could, how can someone have a GPA of a four and four ten and fail in six classes? It's a great question. So the question is when it's asking about the GPA, what does it say? It says GPA scale reporting they want to know the highest GPA that a student can get in East Bridgewater. If the highest GPA they can get is a five, it would be on a 5.0 scale. Ours actually isn't. Because a student, although they take an AP class which is worth a 5.0 towards their GPA, they're not gonna be taking every single AP class throughout their history here. So the highest GPA they're gonna get is in, a, is in the fours. So it's in that range from four to 4.99, but I, I imagine our high, I'm not sure what our highest GPA could possibly be, mm -hmm. but it's not a five and it could be maybe a 4.4. 4. It but is- We've done a lot of research looking into this because yeah. it is very confusing. So it is confusing, but just know that most high schools will weight their GPA for honors and AP courses. And colleges know this, so colleges very often will go and unweight the GPA. So a couple of students have said, how do I calculate my unweighted GPA? I mean, you can do that, but the colleges are gonna do that. And very often, some of the admissions counselors have their own calculation that they use with their own multipliers for different courses. So they know that you're, sele you're submitting a weighted GPA. They see your transcript, it says honors or AP, and then they will do very often their own calculations. Any other questions? Okay. If, if you have them, we're gonna have time at the end also to ask them, so. Um, okay, so they're gonna submit a lot of information through this Common App. Like I said, you're just gonna follow through these subheadings. Down here where it says writing, this is where your student's gonna submit their essay, their college essay that they've written. So I added that three colleges to my Common App and it's gonna tell me here that all three colleges require me to submit my essay. So it's gonna ask me if I understand that not all colleges require it. I say I understand. There's no schools that I've selected that don't require it. When we scroll down, your students are given these prompts. So in their junior English class, they were given the opportunity to write on one of these prompts. Ms. Fahey and I went to the English classes. We discussed these prompts to make sure that they had them with the hope that over the summer they continued to work on them. One of the essay prompts at the end is new as of, it was either last year or the year before, but share an essay yeah. on any topic of your choice. So that's kind of nice. They're not sort of just pigeonholed into one of these if they felt like they had an essay that would be great that just didn't fit. What they're gonna do is they can either cut it in cut it from a document and paste it here, or now they can upload it from a Google Doc through Google Drive. And your students will all know how to do that. They've been doing that over the four years since they've been in high school. So that is where the essay is going to be attached. So all of the information that is in this Common App tab is gonna be sent to all of the colleges that you or your student are applying to. So Boston College is gonna receive all of this information. Emerson is gonna receive all of this information for my colleges, that I, my example colleges. 
And then when we go to the Mycologist tab, they will receive my Common App tab information, and then they're also going to receive the specific college information. Okay. Again, we went through the questions, just an overview. This recommenders and FERPA piece is really, really, really important that you guys understand what this is and how it needs to be filled out. So we're going to watch a video on it just so you can see. It's just like a minute and a half video. Um, but let's do that now. It'll explain the FERPA, and then I'm going to walk you through and show you how to do it. So we'll go to the guide. We're going to go down. It's going to talk to you about how to fill out your application, creating the account. There's a video to see how to do that. There's lit literally a video that's new this year for every section of the Common App. So if you have any questions, you can go back and watch a video. So how to add a college. OK. And let's see. OK. Here's the one on the FERPA. Let's hope there's sound. Is it on? Mm. Oh, no. This is where you need a tech person. <coughs> oh, is this sound? Watch, I'm going to touch something and then mess it all up. Um, you know what? I don't necessarily want to play with it because I don't really want to play with it. Okay. All right. Well, watch the video, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it either way. So what the FERPA is, is it's a release of information. This is what allows us to send your students' information, their transcript, and their letters of recommendation to all of the colleges that they're applying to through the Common App. So we're going to complete the release of authorization. Okay. So the FERPA regulates the privacy of your students' education. It also gives you the right to review confidential letters of recommendation provided as part of that application after you enroll. In a moment, you'll be asked if you want to waive the right to review confidential letters of recommendation. What should you know about this waiver? Waiving your right lets colleges know that you do not intend to read your recommendations, which helps reassure colleges that the letters are candid and truthful. Some recommenders may decline to write a letter for you if you do not waive your rights. Check with your counselor or teachers to see if any of them follow such a policy. They do, and we do. Unfortunately, kids want to see their letters of recommendation. If I was a student, I would too. But unfortunately, as part of this process, they can't. I would never write a bad letter of recommendation on a student's behalf. I know Ms. Fahey would not either. So you can trust 100% that that will not we do not want to affect your students' chances of being successful from here on out. So please have confidence in that. So it says, before you move on, take a moment to discuss your decision with your counselor. You're going to say you have read and understand. We continue. I acknowledge that every school that I have attended may release all requested records and recommendations to the colleges to which I am applying. So this allows us to send your students' information to wherever it needs to go. This is the piece that needs to be selected a certain way. Please select one. I waive my right to view all recommendations and supporting documents, or I do not waive my right to view all recommendations and supporting documents. Once you make the decision, it cannot be changed. So one year we had a student select, I do not waive my right to review all recommendations and supporting documents. What happened there was, we were not able to submit anything on the student's behalf, and that student was then required to send all of their transcripts and all of their first term grades, semester grades, and final grades to their colleges. And it was a significant, in, in looking at it backwards, they realized that was not necessarily the right decision. They just weren't quite sure what to do, and they didn't ask. So what that student did is they had to call the Common App and they had, to, they had them reset their whole application and they had to start it all over. And then they select, I waive my right to review all recommendations and supporting documents. I understand that once I make the decision, it cannot be changed. 
and then you sign it and you date it. That's why we always stress to a student, if you have a question, ask. So when you watch the video, because you're going to leave here, and then you're going to go home, and you're going to be like, I don't really remember what she said. Which one do I pick? Please watch the video, because it will walk you through, and it actually selects this selection as you're watching it. So, and it'll explain again why. But when you sign it, So I'm going to do today's date. By doing this, I'm then able to add more information. Now we have more information. Now I'm able to invite either myself or Ms. Fahey as my guidance counselor and also invite my teacher to write my letter of recommendation for me. So all students need to invite counselor. Everyone's going to go down, you guys all, so in the, one of the last slides in your handout has Ms. Fahey's contact information and it has my information. I'll just use Ms. Fahey's information right now. Okay. So I'm going to invite Ms. Fahey to write my letter of recommendation. So what happened just now is Ms. Fahey got an email asking to submit information on my behalf. So she's gonna be able to go on, she's gonna be able to submit the school report, which all schools require. It's gonna give information about what East Bridgewater is as a high school, the classes that we offer, AP, honors, CP classes, how many students we have, and so on. It's gonna allow Ms. Fahey to upload her letter of recommendation for me it's going to allow her to upload my grades, my first term grades, my semester grades, and my final grades to the college that I'm going to communicate to her that I am applying to. Okay. After she submits on my behalf, it's going to say submitted. Um, so that's a really nice way for students to keep track that it was done because I know if I was a high school senior right now and I asked Ms. Fahey to write my letter of recommendation and send my transcripts and I don't know if she did, I would be so nervous because I want my stuff to get there when it needs to get there. So this way they'll be able to track. And same with their teachers. So you can see for teacher, Boston College, they require two. I haven't seen many schools that require two letters of recommendation. So if we've communicated to your teachers, they should ask at least, they should ask one teacher for a letter of recommendation, and they need to do a little research to find out if the colleges would like more. Mm -hmm. Some colleges won't even let you invite more than one. So what I'm gonna do is, we're gonna invite a teacher. I'm gonna just, as an example, I'm gonna invite my English teacher, Mrs. Hulk. I'm gonna, put her contact information in here. I'm gonna put her email. Make sure you guys know your teacher's email addresses because if it's not right, they're not gonna get the email that you've requested it through the Common App. They're not gonna be able to upload your stuff. And it says, would you like this teacher to complete an evaluation for your Boston College application? Yes. So I'm gonna invite Ms. Hulk. And she's she just gonna get an email. An email. <laughs> She just got an email from me <laughs> saying that Michelle Lyons would like her to submit a letter of recommendation on my behalf. You're able to invite, yes? Uh, well, this one requires two. Boston so College I would, I would, requires two. Yeah, Boston College requires two. I can show you, let's look at Emerson. When I go to recommenders in FERPA, once my FERPA is done one time, I don't have to do it again. So I will always have a check mark there now. My counselor continues to show up. I do not have to invite Ms. Fahey again. One is required through Emerson and one is optional. So this gets a little confusing. So I would think I've already invited Ms. Hulk. I don't have to do it again. I actually have to assign her now. Now the reason I have to do that is Let's do this. I'm going to, I'm just gonna invite myself. <laughs> and I just wanna show you. Sorry, 
just easy. Hmm? You know, when you do it in front of a room full of people, <laughs> you get it wrong. You sit in your office all day and you get it right. <laughs> E-B-P-S dot net. Okay. So, yes, I'm going to invite myself. So, okay. I want to go down to this Mass College of Art because if I'm only allowed to have one teacher write my letter of recommendation, I need to choose, do I want Ms. Hulk to write it? Or do I want the college to read Ms. Hulk's letter of recommendation? Or do I want them to read Mrs. Lyon's letter of recommendation? So now I get to choose. Let's say I only want them to read Ms. Hulk's, then I assign it. If I only want them to read my other English teacher, Mrs. Lyons, <laughs> I'll write a sign, okay? Is that clear? Okay, I, know, I don't know if my, me using my name confused it a little bit, but you wanna <laughs> add all of your teachers that you wanna invite, and then you're gonna have to assign them to each specific school that you want your letter of recommendation to be received by. If you don't assign them, Ms. Hulk will not be added to that school and they will not receive it from her or from myself. Correct, yes. So if I want to also use an additional optional letter of recommendation, I would hit assign there as well. If you don't fill out the paragraph before you do, would it not even be an option to fill it out? I do not believe it's an option because we cannot send your information where it needs to go. I didn't choose the other way to fill it out because if I do that, I'm locked out and I can't even walk you through this. Yeah, that, hence that student had to call Common App and redo his whole Common App. So, what's that? No, it doesn't work that way on FERPA. I just view details. It's a great question. View details, view release. I'm sorry, if you can't hear that. They asked if you can edit the FERPA once you submit it. I cannot edit it. I can uncheck it. Let's see but I believe my information stands. Uh, I believe it does. Yeah, I don't know if I can actually save it. Once, so I apply that my selections on this page cannot be changed after any recommendation or application submission. Okay, well, it looks like you can change it up to that point now. That makes sense. Right. No, so it looks like you can change it up until the point that someone submits on your behalf. I think that's new this year. It is new this year, so that's helpful. So, yeah, we want to do, yeah. That's, okay. That's helpful information. So if you can see here on the side, it actually has a whole list of instructions and help. Two. So you can always refer back to those. And down here, other recommender. This is where your students can add an employer, a coach, clergy, anybody. If they have a college, some students will pay additional money for a college access counselor. They can write letters of recommendation as well. So that's where you'd add that information. It was on the top? Oh. What happens if I don't waive my FERPA? So you, you'll go through and read any questions you have. I, I'm going to be very forthcoming. If I will not submit a letter of recommendation on a student's behalf, if they do not waive the right to read them. So a lot of teachers will hand their letter of recommendation to the student, I, I will not. So, um, and I'm not sure about Ms. Fahey, how she feels about that, but I. No, they just hand it so a student can keep it for their own records. The, after they submit it, yes. No, I'm happy to give a letter of recommendation, but 
They're not allowed to see the letter of recommendation. So the Metcalf amendment waived her rights mm -hmm. and then to go to the letter of recommendation. Correct. Which she goes through. Not all colleges require a letter of recommendation. However, we can send their transcripts and I mean, it says it very clearly, and I'm happy to talk to you afterwards. We can discuss it further. Um, the colleges don't, they don't, the letter of recommendation won't carry the same amount of weight if you do not waive your FERPA rights. That's just the way it is. They don't want students to see their letter of recommendation. And that was explained in the view details. When you go through, it explains why, um, w how it's viewed when you don't waive your rights versus when you do. So, so So what Ms. Faye and I are going to do when we're going to write your letter of recommend your students for a letter of recommendation, we're going to talk your, about your student as a whole. So we're going to talk about what they've contributed to the East Bridgewater community as a school. Sometimes their transcript will tell a story, and if we need to communicate some of that with your student, how they want that conveyed to the colleges, we will work with your student on that letter of recommendation. Yeah, we we do not. We would never put something in a letter of recommendation. We would not write a bad letter of recommendation. Never. We just wouldn't do it. What I, what I tell students, too, is a lot of times, like Ms. Lyons said, a stu and this is what we tell the student, a student might have had like a terrible sophomore year. So we'll sit down with the student, and I will write in the letter of recommendation, you know, this student had a tough time sophomore year. Their transcript is not an accurate depiction of who they are as a student. I was super proud of the way they advocated for themselves and they were able to turn things around. So that's how we're writing letters of recommendation. We would never put anything in the letter of recommendation that would cause a college admissions officer to think, oh, you know, we just wouldn't do it. That's not what we do. And if a college does have a concern, they'll call us. And we, we encourage that and we reach out to admissions counselors as well. They come here, we have really good relationships with them. I feel, and Ms. Fahey I know feels, that our job is to sell your students to the colleges that they're applying to. Yes. No, this is a standard in the industry. I don't know too many school counselors, uh, guidance counselors that would let their students read their recommendations. So actually, on the Common App, there is a spot on there for disciplinary history, and it's going to ask somewhere in here. I don't know specifically where. So I know there is a spot on there that is under grades. Um, we have an option as well. Like I said, we are not looking to sabotage your student by any means. And there's a spot on there that says on the guidance counselor end, um, the school policy prohibits us from reporting that information. So if a college, depending on what your student puts in their application, a college admissions counselor may reach out to one of us to have a conversation about what happened. Um, and it is a it's, a, it's a legal application. And if your student is concerned if they were in in-school suspension or out-of-school suspension, we were happy to sit down with parents and kids to figure out the best way to navigate that. 
So if there's a specific thing that you or your student are concerned about, please make an appointment with Ms. Fahey and I, and we will navigate that with you guys individually. Okay? I can't reiterate it enough. We, are, we only want to help your kids get where they want to go. I can just say that I've never submitted any disciplinary mm -hmm. information. We are not and I've submitting. never put on um, the, that section, I've never put, I want to discuss over the mm -hmm. phone. And we're not going to the main office and getting their discipline records. We're not doing, that. guidance doesn't do that. We're not, they're not asking for that and we don't do that. Yeah. So attendance records, they're not asking any of that information and we're not giving any of that information. Then we'll, just, we'll sit down, mom, dad, student, and we will sit down and discuss how to navigate that. And Ms. Fahey and I, we're very forthcoming. We will speak very candidly about all of that, depending on the situation. Okay, so please don't hesitate to make an appointment with us if you are concerned about that specific question and what to do. It won't allow you to, I don't think it'll allow you on the Common App anyway, if it asks for two, it won't allow you to invite more than two. So you can see here for Emerson, it says one is required and one is optional. It won't even give me the option to send additional academic ones. It will allow me to send one optional other recommender, but outside of that, I can't even add anybody else to that. So each school will tell you specifically what's required. Some will say zero. There's schools that don't want letters of recommendation. They are only gonna judge your student based on their GPA and their SAT scores, unfortunately. And the next that will follow will be their college essay, their extracurricular activities, and their letters of recommendation. If you have any question, and I go through this with students, if you have any questions about this, you come to us. If you have further questions, I had a student last year that was worried about the school that they were looking at had a certain um, SAT like their average SAT and the students was well below. We sat together and I coached that student on how to reach out to admissions because admissions counselors love to hear from the students, not the parents. If, if a student reaches out to an admissions counselor and says, I have a question about this. So what the admissions counselor said was, you know, why don't you take a subject test SAT for this particular school, it was an engineering school. So they love when students reach out. So we always, Ms. Lyons and I always tell the students, if you have any questions at all, come to us. If it's something that should be directed to the college, reach out to admissions. Because every school is different yep. and we can't just give blanket information about what a school wants. So we don't want to interfere with that. So when in doubt, please, e your students should email the admissions counselor or call them. The odds are more than likely they're going to be speaking to the admissions counselor who's going to be reading their applications. Right. So that really looks, it, it makes a really good impression on that admissions counselor when they say, oh, I remember so and so. Right. And we're going to have admissions counselors also coming to the school and your student will have an opportunity to sit down with them, um, make eye contact, mm -hmm. shake hands, learn more about the program, but most importantly, introduce themselves to that admissions counselor that will be reading their application which will be a great opportunity that we will make announcements on a regular basis which colleges are coming and when. Yes. A teacher that you, so you asked if, so I, we recommend that all students have a teacher who they've had in an academic class. If you want to have an optional one for an advisor, I, that would go, that should go under other recommender. And the reason for that is when you guys are applying to college, the college wants to make sure that they are learning more information about what kind of a student you are in the classroom. So they want to know your character, they want to know work ethic, they want to know those strengths. And that teacher that's been with you in that class or whether it be the year or half the year or whatever it is, they'll be able to write a true testament to that. So we recommend 
asking a teacher to write the letter of recommendation, who knows that character? And it doesn't have to be the class that you got an A plus in, it can be the class that you really struggled in and you didn't get the grade that you ultimately wanted, but you stayed after and you worked really hard to try and improve and get the grade that you wanted, but ultimately might not have. But that really attests to the kind of student that you are and ultimately the kind of student that they're gonna see on their campus next fall. Does that make sense? Okay, okay. So after you guys go through, you're gonna answer all of these questions, you're gonna do the recommenders. Once you have check marks in all of these boxes and all of these areas under the Common App tab, it's gonna let you review and submit your application. Sometimes check marks appear when, they sh when things aren't fully filled out. So please, there's an extracurricular activity. I think it's under education. I haven't filled that section out. However, I'm not sure where it is. There's just so many different tabs to go from. Um, I think it's down here. I'm not sure where it is. Just double, we encourage kids to just double check your check marks. Make sure the application is fully filled out. There are gonna be schools like Boston College, they're gonna have questions, they're gonna have the recommender section, they're also gonna have additional writing supplements and questions that need to be filled out. So as an example, we'd like to get a better sense of you in a 400 word essay, Max, please respond to one of these prompts. So I spoke to Boston College about this additional essay piece and they said the reason they add that in there is because the year that they started doing that, it reduced their applications by 30%. So we encourage students, if it says additional optional essay, I believe this is not optional, we encourage, write it. Fill out that application as thoroughly as you can and sell to that college why you wanna go there. If there's an optional essay that says, why do you wanna go to Stonehill or why Bridgewater, make sure you or your student is putting in there, or your student is putting in there, I've been to your campus, you have A, B, C, and D that I'm looking for. I met you at East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School on this date. It was wonderful sitting down with you to discuss your program of criminal justice, whatever it might be. Make sure when it says recommended or additional information, it might be optional, but in my eyes it's not. If it's gonna weed you out and there's another student that did it and your student didn't, they might take them just because they did. So we communicate to our students, we don't want any regrets. If they didn't get into their number one school because they didn't fill out an area, we don't want them to look back and say, maybe if I filled out that area, I would have got in. So we just want them to be as thorough as possible. And really, you know, the junior, when they went on that junior college field trip, it was about finding the right fit for your student. Now it's in the college's hand and the college is trying to find the right fit for them. They are looking for a specific profile of student that they want on their campus. So if your student's done their homework, then they know that they'll be a good fit for that college and they gotta make sure that they sell that in this application. Because this application, it's, it's in writing, but you're not gonna be sitting in front of, their student's not gonna be sitting in front of them to show them that character. They're gonna be judging based off of a black and white application, okay? After you have check marks in all of these areas, you're gonna be able to review and submit the writing supplement, and then you'll ultimately be able to review and submit your application. When I click on it now, it's gonna tell me that there's a lot of information that's missing, and it will not let me submit without having check marks in all of those areas. What's kind of nice is, under this college search area, there's this application requirements spot that it tells you all of the deadlines for each Common App school. And then when I click on my colleges, it'll just show the three that I added on there. It tells me my deadlines is a great organizational tool. It also and is gonna tell me my fees it. for application. It's gonna tell me it requires the personal essay 
it's some of these are going to require a portfolio for whatever reason no it's a supplemental that's that supplemental writing piece but if you have a question on what any of these abbreviations mean you click the information button and it'll tell you it'll also give you information about what they require for SATs Emerson does not require the SATs looks like Mass College of Art and Design sometimes requires it maybe depending on which program you're entering into BC always requires it none of them use the essay I think it's fascinating that they offer it when none of them seem to use it but there must be <laughs> colleges on here that do require it and it tells you for recommenders what they require by way of forms but like I said you can click here and see what these abbreviations mean so they require letters of recommendation mid-year reports that will be um, your students semester grades counselor recommendations yes Yes, great question. You can submit the Boston College application before I submit the other applications. They, don't have to go together. they do not have to go together. There's been times where students will start an application and then they change their mind and say, you know what, I don't really want to go to Emerson after all, and they can just leave it open-ended. I created an account last year and I added a bunch of schools. I never submitted anything. So, and those schools were still on my account when I reopened it again this year. So, and again, Boston College, um, they're not going to receive any of my information until I review and submit. And again, Emerson is not going to see that I'm applying to Boston College and so on. So these tabs are very separate. But this Common App tab, again, everything I put here is going to be going to the colleges that are on my list. There's also this dashboard for organizational purposes also. And you can see, it looks like Emerson has an additional writing supplement. Mass College of Art does not. So there's just a lot of different ways to organize and make sure that all of the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted. So I hope that it's stressful if you've never seen the Common App and have no idea what this process looks like. So the hope was tonight to go through to spell some of the fear because it's pretty straightforward it just is time consuming so if your student sits down and just starts plugging away at it before they're gonna they're gonna be ready to apply I think sometimes the application is the easy part and the waiting after you after you submit is the hard part so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go back here Ms. Faye is going to address senior stress, and we'll talk about some questions if, if there's any remaining. So this is definitely a stressful process. So our role is try to reduce some of that stress for your students and for you. Um, but there's stress throughout the process. So you know, before, there's that hesitation sometimes because it feels overwhelming. So we're there to help with that. You know, during, as Ms. Lyons says, sometimes, you know, it's overwhelming to do the application, then you submit the application, and it's almost like, wow, that was easy. Now it's the waiting. Um, you know, did I make the right decisions? Did I do enough research? So there's always going to be that piece. And then finally, <laughs> people tend to forget about this point, but once they get accepted, once they make the decision, there's that anxiety over the orientation process when you go to the school. Again, did I make the right decision? So what we're trying to do is give your students some support along the way, some tools to help them manage. Um, and I know it's difficult as a parent. My oldest was pretty specific. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. He did his research. He applied. If he, he asked me for help, if I gave him advice, he pretty much took it. My second son does not want to talk about it. Little by little, I have to wait till he comes for me. He's just going through a different process. And I, as much as I want to step in and try to influence and everything, I think when I do that, it only pushes him away and gets him more stressed out. So it's parents, it takes a lot of patience, but you'll get through it. Um, and we're, we're, we're yeah. happy to help you. Yes. It's nice, Ms. Faye and I have had your students for the last three years, and we've really enjoyed it. And it's really nice because I feel like, and I know she can reiterate, I feel like I've really gotten to know your students over the last three years. 
So we want to help them. We want to help you. So if your student is shutting down and you need help, the three of us or the four of us invite whomever. We'll talk it out. We'll figure it out. And we'll make sure that we're all on the same page. Mm -hmm. And like Ms. Fahey just said, sometimes they, you guys need a little support around it. So we are happy to be that support um, and sort of, I think we, we can help with just bring the walls down a little bit that your students have sometimes built up because they don't necessarily always have the answers. So they just push away. So are there any questions before? We're just gonna share the last bit of information, mm -hmm. which is um, some important dates that are coming up about a financial aid night and our information um, as well if you need that. So um, as Ms. Lyon said, the FAFSA is available October 1st. That doesn't mean you have to do it October 1st, but the sooner you do it, the better. In most cases, the FAFSA, in a lot of cases, you can just link your tax return. But um, if you want to fill that out early in case you have questions, you want to get that information so that you don't have to be doing that at the last minute. Because the schools will, the government uses that to determine, you know, how much aid you get, but the schools also use it for their packages. So they're going to require it as well. Um, so we have a call, every year, Whitman Hansen usually um, has a college fair. This year, East Bridgewater, Silver Lake, they all got together, and Silver Lake is actually hosting it. So it's Tuesday, October 1st from 6.30 to 8 p.m. It's a great way for, you know, juniors can go and get some information. But if your students are still kind of questioning, you know, they can go and talk to admissions counselors at the fair. That's another way to make a connection. So if they're interested in, you know, WPI or whatever, um, they can go and talk to an admissions counselor from that school. And then again, when they're doing their application, they can say, I was at a, you know, a college fair and I met an admissions counselor. You, and you can make that connection. And then finally, the financial aid night at Stonehill is Wednesday, October 2nd um, at 6.30. And we share that information with the students on the Google Classroom. And you can just go right onto their website and sign up for that. They do an excellent job. They go through every, the FAFSA, they share a lot of information. So if you have questions about that piece, I would encourage you to attend. We also do a financial aid night here. It's a little different. It's just, um, it's not as detailed as the one that Stonehill does. So I would encourage you to go to that if you have questions. And it's just housed at Stonehill. They're not affiliated with Stonehill, so you don't have to apply to go there. But it's just an open night. Yeah. And the well, um, we'll put the information out about where it is specifically at Stonehill, so you have that information. But everybody, it's on their website. Welcome. Though, if you Google Stonehill fi Stonehill Financial Aid Night, it'll take you right to the link. But we will share that with you. And then finally, um, just our contact information. And again, the information that we gave to students f that they need for the Common App is our address and our school code, 220705. So there was a lot of information. Process it. You might have questions in a couple of days. Feel free to give us a call. Yeah, sure. So we talked a little bit about this in our presentations to them. So we do, um, we have a lot of local scholarships. The community is very generous. And in the February, March time frame, we will do um, an assembly and share that information with students. Very often there's one application for multiple scholarships. Some require um, their own application. So all those local scholarships, we do have um, a scholarship night and an awards night, but I've been telling students, if you have a relative that works at Stop and Shop, you can start to look into those things now. When I was in high school, my dad was a police officer. There was a police scholarship. I applied for it. So you can start to do some research, but we do have a process here in the spring, and we're pretty generous here at EB. And as we learn about more scholarships, we'll put together a Google form that your students will have access to, and then they can come down to guidance, and we will have that application information available down in guidance. Um, and any utility, Ms. Faye was saying, any utility company, when you're sitting around the table at Thanksgiving, have that conversation <laughs> with your family members. If they have scholarships available, 
if you're a member of credit unions, they want to give it to their clients or their employees' families. So have those conversations now. A student just came down the other day and said, Mrs. Fahey, some, um, I was at work and they told me that Honeydew Donuts has a scholarship. I'm like, great, apply for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Early decision. That varies college by college. I don't think, I know at UMass Amherst, depending on what school you apply to, like the business school and the engineering school are very competitive. Um, if you apply to those schools and you don't get in, you won't be in the pool for the other colleges. Early action is the same. Um, it varies by college. We it doesn't automatically put you in the pool. That's when we say to the students, please call the admissions office. And they can ask the specific situation, and they can give them their GPA and their SAT scores and even provide them their transcript and ask what they recommend. So all colleges will give different information. I, so Boston College, I just, I bring it up just because I had, they had a great, um, they said that they admit 30% of their applicants early action. Now I think it's only early decision that they can right. do. And they accept 70% of their applicants regular decision. So your chances are better, right, with if you apply regular. So it just depends. Mm, yeah, it does. If, if you're not at the, if you're not above right. and beyond, you know, what their expectation is, you may want to consider doing regular. And the reason for that is when you apply regular decision, that deadline's January. They're not going to make a decision before they get your student's semester grades. So it, show, it allows your student a little bit more time to show them what they're doing during their senior year, which will typically show them the kind of student that they will be when they graduate their senior year and be on their campus. When your students apply early, they're gonna find out the application decision by Christmas. So they won't have their semester grades at that point. Most colleges will not make a decision until they have their first term grades. The first term closes, I believe, November 6th, and your students might have a November 1st deadline. So your student's gonna submit their information. If they're taking the SATs in October, and maybe there's a delay in the scores getting there, they typically won't review the application until all of their information is there. There's a spot on the Common App that asks the question, are you planning to take the SATs again? And if so, what date are you planning to take them? So they can say they're taking them November 1st or October, whatever. So the schools will be anticipating another score report. Some colleges want to see all the information there mm -hmm. by that due date, while some, like I said, will not review the information until it's all there. But again, they're not going to most colleges will not make a decision until they have their first term grades. So and we will send them those the second that we get them and right. they're published. And each college is unique, so that's why when we're sitting down with our students, we'll go over the colleges that they're gonna apply to, and I say make sure you look at their specific requirements, because they do have you know, an average SAT score or an average GPA. Now that doesn't mean if you're, if you're slightly below that you're not gonna get in, but it will just change you know, how you go about applying. So if, you know, for a lot of students ask me about test optional, if your test scores are well below the average and it's a test optional school, then, you know, you're not gonna wanna send those. But if your scores are higher, obviously that's going to help your decision. So you really have to look at every school's admission requirements and also, you know, how, what's, if, if that's your top school, you're going to reach out, you're going to do anything you can to kind of make, make the right decision. And that's when you ask the question. So it's really a school by school. You have to do an analysis of each school. It seems kind of crazy that I feel like now they're really pushing the applications earlier and earlier. And when we go to conferences, we hear that 
they give away money too based on once you once your student is accepted you're going to receive a letter in the mail that's going to break down how much merit aid which is scholarship money that does not have to be repaid they're going to give you a lot of financial information and as your decision as their decisions are made later and later that money is being given away so my understanding is if you're competitive for the school and you're a good match for that school apply early mm -hmm. i think financially they're pushing for it. And a lot of the schools are looking at if you apply early, it shows that your intent is to go there. I mean, that's how they've communicated that they're viewing it. I feel like early is the new regular decision. They want to know as soon as possible what that class is going to look like. Any, Any other, other questions? questions? Well, if you have them, if you think of anything, please email, please call us. We'll make a meeting to come in. Your students should come down. And please fill out the um, evaluation. evaluation. Thank you. And you could just leave them on the table back there if you fill Thank it out. Thank you guys very much Thank for coming. Thank you for coming.